What's going on Broncos country? If you guys are excited for the new coaching staff, we will take a peek at in today's video. Then go ahead and like today's video. I want to get to 300 likes, so hit that big thumbs up icon to start today's show. Today's Broncos breakdown is all about checking out the latest coaching staff. It's pretty much complete. I have complete down there, but you never quite know in the NFL. Sometimes coaches like to call up a buddy and like, hey, you want to smoke cigars and you want to come coach some football with me in Denver? So you can't quite call it a guarantee. But before we look at the pretty much entire coaching staff for the Broncos, I think it's important to look at the previous regime, just the big names here, just to see what we're going from and to. So last year, of course, after three seasons, big fan you a head coach Pat Shermer comes in and that was a horrendous job Ed Donatel the defensive coordinator his time is done and then Tom McMahon who's going over to Vegas and honestly that is addition by subtraction in my opinion special teams unit last year was probably the worst unit of the three for the Broncos maybe worse than the offense so if he wants to go coach a foe in the Raiders by all means knock yourself out because the Raiders fan base will be well they're gonna Raider and they're gonna do some pretty messed up things when that hits the fan in like week three now let's look at the new coaching staff though I've got their age at the bottom and we'll go in more depth about a couple of these guys uh, in just a second but I think it's worth noting this is a younger regime okay Vic Fangio up there in the age column Hackett just over 40 years old his OC 38 his DC 41 the oldest of the bunch right here of the big four names is at 45 and it's the new special teams coordinator Dwayne Stukes who comes over from the Rams. Now, let's touch on uh, Ejiro Evero, the new defensive coordinator. He's going to stick to a lot of the things that um, Vic Fangio did that worked because if it's not broke, don't fix it. This defense was awesome last year. So if you're Evero, you're walking into a pretty good situation. And sometimes coaches feel the need to get their hands all over it and make it their own. No, if you got a great thing, which the new DC, Evero, does, why mess it up? He's going to stick with the 3-4 defense, and so you're going to see a lot of the similar looks you saw out of last year, and he's going to continue the aggressiveness, and that's the things that he really harped on in his press conference the other day. Now, on the offensive side, the new offensive coordinator, Justin Uden, who's not going to be calling the plays, that's going to stay with Hackett, he had a pretty interesting quote about Drew Locke. We put it up on screen. Let me read it to you guys. He's got a powerful arm. He's done a really good job as far as using his legs and being an athlete. As far as an evaluation, I want to see how he fits in the system a little bit more once he gets the playbook under him, and then we'll go from there. It's not juicy, you know, hot stuff right there, but, eh, you know, I'm not going to say that uh, it's a guarantee that Drew Locke will be the starting quarterback, but if you're Drew Locke, not the worst thing your new OC could say about you, right? He's going to be, he's going to have coachy talk, right? He's not going to let you know too much about what's going on in his mind. But if you read between the lines right there, I think what Hack and Uten are doing are saying, all right, if Peyton can't go out and get a veteran quarterback like Rodgers or Wilson or Jimmy Garoppolo, Kirk Cousins, one of those kind of guys, then we've got to be prepared for options C and D or B and C, which is drafting a quarterback or rolling with Locke. And, if you look, do your homework and you think about Peyton and what he did in the draft last year, if he didn't like Justin Fields and he didn't like Mac Jones at number nine, I don't think he's going to like these quarterbacks at number nine. And so I would think that they'd be inclined to roll with Locke as a kind of a temporary rental-ish quarterback for the last year of his deal. And if he balls out, great. You got five picks in the top 100 to make assets around him. If it doesn't work out, then you know you're going to be drafting a quarterback in 2023. Before I look at the rest of the coaching staff that's coming aboard at Mile High, which staff do you like more? Like 2021 or 2022, just off those four big names between the head coach, offense, defense coordinators, and the special teams. Let me know what you think down below by putting the year for that coaching staff. Now we look at the new offensive staff here. I got some notes because, believe it or not, I have not memorized all of the things about these guys. So we'll start with the wide receiver coach, Zach. Uh, I'm going to say his last name correctly. Azanari? Azini? Azani? Azani? I like Azani best. Uh, so Azani retained as the wide receiver coach. He's been there for, uh, what is it, since 2018 now. So he's hanging around. A lot of other uh, former coaches were let go under Hackett. Azani, he stays aboard. Tyrone Wheatley, he's also going to come up uh, 
as the running back coach. He overlapped with Hackett when they were in Syracuse together, also in Buffalo with the Bills. As for Butch Berry, the offensive line coach, he was the 49ers assistant offensive line coach last year. That 49ers team made running the football look Playing out fun. So I like what he's already doing right there. Raymond Chin Young, the offensive quality control coach. He was a Texas high school coach. And Texas loves football more than anything else loves anything. So he's probably a decent mind already. And I don't really know what quality guys, control coaches do besides just, I don't know, make sure everything's looking smooth. So I like that hire already. Uh, other names, Clint Kubiak, the quarterback coach. He comes over from Minnesota where he was the offensive coordinator. So he's got plenty of experience in that field. Jake Moreland, the tight end coach, entering his second year in the NFL. He was with the Jets last year. And Ben Steele, uh, kind of a familiar name for Rodgers at least if he were to come over to Denver as he threw his first touchdown pass to Ben Steele in the preseason. He's been in the NFL since 2013. Last year, he was with the Vikings as their assistant offensive line coach. So you're seeing some familiar teams popping up between Minnesota, Green Bay, basically places Hackett and Peyton have been. Guys, if you have not subscribed to the Broncos Breakdown already, do us a favor and hit that big red button. We are closing in on our goal of 6,000 subs. Trying to get there before the month is up, and so we're up against the deadline. Help me out. Get the bosses off my back here at Chat Sports because if we don't get more subscribers, then they give this studio time to different channels, and I don't want to see more Raiders videos. So make sure you hit that big red button and subscribe. Also, if you love NFL trade rumors and mock drafts, then the mothership here at Chat Sports, our Chat Sports main channel, has a great show called NFL Daily, where we talk all things NFL. We also get on the NBA and college football, really anything. So make sure you go to youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Let's look at the defensive staff now here. Dom Capers comes over as the senior assistant defensive coach. He was with the, one, he's got some head coaching experience. He's been in the NFL for over three decades, but a long time DC in Green Bay. I kind of like this move a lot, actually, because we looked at the big wigs of the offense and defensive coordinator, special teams, and a lot of those guys under 50, Dom Capers, he brings some experience. Peter Hansen, the linebacker coach, he was with uh, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, as their D.C. the last two years. Christian Parker, he's the D.B.'s coach. Uh, Parker was with the Broncos last year and in Green Bay the season before that. So he's got some overlap with Hackett there. Burt Watts as the outside linebacker coach. He was the linebacker coach for Auburn in 2021. A lot of these names... I don't know them, you know, you don't know them, you know, uh, the familiar ones that were with the Broncos last year, those ones, of course, but these are names where you just got to take it, not as a grain of salt, but more as, okay, they're popular in coaching circles, they're doing something right to get the call up from a, an assistant job to a promotion or from the college ranks to the NFL. We look at the rest of the defensive staff here. Ola Adams, the assistant DB coach, he was with Villanova. I know they have a football team, actually, um, as their DC uh, for quite some time. And then you got Andrew Carter. He was uh, He's going to be the quality control coach. He was the grad assistant for Kansas the last two years. Kansas football is pretty bad, so I hope Carter was the only good thing about it. Marcus Dixon's the defensive line coach. Dixon was the Rams' assistant defensive line coach. So Everett, I think, just brings his buddy over to Denver. And then Bill Kohler, who has been with the Broncos for quite some time, since 2015. He's going to hang around and be the defensive line coach slash uh, defensive coach, at least as of now. You never quite know what the coaching staff will look like, really, for the first couple of months as Hackett gets his feet wet and conducts more interviews and puts together the staff he wants because we haven't even started the 2022 season yet. Speaking of defense, though, I want to ask this question. Who's your favorite all-time Broncos defensive player not named Von Miller? You can't do the easy one. You can't just say, you know, put 58 down for me. Who is your favorite defensive player not named Von? Let me know down in the comments section below. We'll wrap it up with looking at some other coaching staff pieces. Um, special teams coordinator assistant Mike Mallory. Uh, what do you have good for Mike? He was with the Jags as their DC uh, from 2013 to 2016. He's been coaching the NFL for quite some time. He's got experience on the defensive side and on special teams. And then you got your strength and conditioning coach like Lauren Lando, uh, Corey Jones, Pierre um, to go, I think, uh, Emily Zaylor. So kind of behind the scenes people, but still important to the organization because I think a big thing you hear when you listen to players do interviews with podcasts and hopping on talk shows is to talk about the 
organization, the locker room, right? The culture of a locker room. And the locker room is more than just the 53 guys on the roster. The locker room includes all these coaches, the assistant coaches, and just, you know, ball, ball boys to Gatorade guys, right? Every single person is a part of the locker room. So all these names may not be household names. They're still important names, and they're still important enough to get into the show and to get a sh not more than a shout-out, but uh, to get some recognition for what the new staff is looking like under Hackett. Speaking of the new staff, if you had to give it a grade, what letter grade would you give it? A, B, C, D, or F? Let me know down below what you're grading it. Personally, I'll go with the cop-out. Time will tell. We'll know in two or three years how this staff works. Anytime there's a coaching carousel right after the season ends, maybe seven to eight head coaches are fired and you get seven to eight new head coaches. Half of those guys are gone after three years. Hopefully the Broncos are on the better half. It's kind of like marriage. You never want to get divorced, but half of the marriages end in divorce. So we'll wait and see how this one rolls out. The only slight hiccup is why I'm not going to get drunk on the Kool-Aid here is when you go young, it sounds super fun because look at the Super Bowl. You had Zach Taylor and you had Sean McVay, both young guys under 40 and who were hired very young in their late 30s. But we know a thing or two about, you know, as Broncos country about hiring young. And Vance Joseph was a young guy. It didn't work out. And then the next guy, Vic Fangio, was an opposite. was an older guy. Didn't work out. So just because there's a new sheriff in town does not mean I'm going to start jumping up and down. Change is awesome. I like change because we need to change from last year. But I'm not just going to jump into bed with them and go, okay, this is a home run. Can't go wrong. We'll pump the brakes and we'll see how the season goes. Make sure you hit that big red button and subscribe. And that way we can stay, keep you guys in the know for all things news and rumors throughout the entire season. And we'll catch you guys later here on the Broncos Breakdown.